Hello once again Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Mechanics. Welcome back to another great video. So today I'm going to be unboxing a new type of car. This of course is the 2021 Dodge Charger Police Pursuit car. And normally I don't get to do new cars on this, but today I thought I would do a nice new police car. So without further ado, let's go down to the bench and see what's in the box. Now we just wind the clock back couple of years to 2021 where we get this amazing AMT Dodge Charger Pursuit Police Car. It says there's new parts and decals included in the kit and boy this looks really good in its black and white paint job. On this side of the box we can see a rear three-quarter shot. It says authentic decals to detail your kit. One-to-one -one vehicle illustration Authentic body chassis and two-wheel options, two light bar options, deck lights, spotlights, push bars, and more. And now we can just move this over and zoom in a little bit. Take a look at the decal sheet, which is right on the side of the box. We have Highway Patrol, numbers 0, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, as well as what looks like California license plates, and then a whole bunch of decals for the different lights and Looks like top of the battery and a whole bunch of other cool things. Turning the box over to this side, we can see some really cool photographs of the real car. Here we have the detailed interior, which shows you the steering wheel, as well as the gauges on the dash. We also have the charger police wheels. And then moving the box lid over a little bit, you can see the 5.7 liter V8 Hemi engine. And turning the box lid over, this is a kit for ages 10 and up skill level two here you can see all the parts trees in the exploded view so we won't really have to open up this kit at all and look at it no i'm just kidding we are going to do that so don't worry but look at this you get the body course so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen Black vinyl tires, 18, and the decal sheet, 19 complete units here to build up this kit. So there are a lot of parts in this thing. So now let's take the lid off this amazing model kit and check out what's inside here. So right away we get our clear components and transparent red rear tail lights. Looks really good. So far so good. In this bag we've got a lot of the white plastic pieces. Looks like quite a lot going on in here, including, oh, looks like an interior wall in here for uh, the baddies to sit in the back, the perps, the perpetrators. There's the two different style wheels and rear end treatments underneath the hood and dual exhausts, as well as disc brakes on there. Here we've got our chrome. Now there's not much on a modern car anymore. Not like one of the big chrome monsters of the 50s. Ooh, check this out. We got the clear glass and it's even framed. They painted the frames in there, so that's a bonus because painting frames on these more modern cars from about like, say, maybe very late 70s, but definitely the 80s, that's always the trick. So to have that pre-painted, it's wonderful. Look at this body, very aerodynamic and smooth. Not too much going on on there. Oh, you get some sun visors molded in up underneath, so that's always cool. And here we've got another bag full of white parts, including the engine and the unibody pan underneath. Then what's going on here? There's our tires. Very nice. And then we have our instruction sheet and those decals at the bottom. So let me clear all this out of the way, and then we'll take a look at the instructions. Here is our instruction sheet, and we have our wonderful illustration of the Pursuit 2021 Dodge Charger right here. And it has the important section down here before you begin assembling your model, study instructions carefully. So that's what we will do as we go through this. Further down the page here, we have our paint color callouts. And what do we have? Well, we got the entire alphabet here, so that's 20... 28, 26, <laughs> anyway, and then these ones down here for semi-gloss and gloss, all these different symbols. 
They got the Dodge trademark down here, as well as part numbers, clear parts, plated parts, all the different symbols you need in order to build the kit. Now this model kit seems to be the kit that keeps on building. So what we have here is quite a lot of steps just in this first half page of the instruction sheets. Here we have our engine block being glued together, both sides left and right. We've got a starter motor, cylinder heads, as well as our exhaust manifolds. Then in step two, we've got our valve covers and the intake as well as the oil pan and the transmission pan, which is really interesting. Then our oil filter goes up here toward, I guess this is the, maybe the front of the engine. Then panel four, we've got our belts. Look at all this serpentine belting going on here. We also have our alternator back here and our power steering, the front timing cover. And then on the back, I'm not sure what this is. Looks like maybe the tip of the transmission. And then we have our cover up here, as well as the top of the cover. Now, in five, we're going into the interior. We're gluing the back of the bucket seat in. Then down in panel six, we've got our dashboard here. And there's going to be a lot of decals going in, as you can see, all through here. And then our steering column, our shift lever, and our steering wheel and it does say to drill a hole in here but it's not really showing where so it might be to the back here to get that little bit in on the back of the steering column and it says sand raised areas smooth if using decals so there must be some uh, instrument panels on here that you could uh, remove in order to get the decals to lay flat here in panel 7, we continue our interior, and these are the inner door panels, which wrap right up into the posts by the door, which is really cool. Look at these armrests you've got going in here, as well as on the other side. Panel 8 is our center console, and I do believe this would be more for the police package. Looks like a police radio sitting in here, as well as some speakers. Maybe a speaker there in the CB part up here. Okay, so then we have our interior, which is a rear pan, and there's your back seats being glued in place. It looks like some police lights back here, as well as there's the wall in between the passenger and the driver, as well as a window in between. And we've got this as well. Not quite sure what that is. Oh, it's a mount for a police computer, which we'll see in a minute here. But overall, this looks really fantastic and really cool to build. Over here, we have panel 10, and here is this two-piece police computer being attached, as well as this swivel mount, which is really cool. Now, here we've got our seats from step 5 being glued into the completed interior, which was step 9. And then we also have the pedals for driving the car, which are being glued right here on the edge of the interior bucket. And I would suggest putting these in first before you put your completed dashboard down. Panel 11, we begin our underside here, and we're going to put on the top of the shock towers up in here. And then in step 12, we're putting our McPherson struts down in between here and here. And then we've got some panels to glue in. This looks like the cross brace for our transmission, and then there's one in the back here as well. Panels 13 and 14 extend into panel 10, as we saw before, but what we have here is more of the front suspension, and there's the steering arms right there. Now these have the little button pin, and there's a little split in them, so don't glue them together, but make sure all your seam lines are clean in here so your wheel will rotate before you click the wheel on and you can't back it out of there. Here we also have what I think are shock towers, maybe? Not too sure on these. I don't totally know my brand new cars, so you got to bear with me here. But uh, here is the entire um, suspension, lower A-arms and all the braces, which will glue in to hold this all together. Here in panel 15, we're putting in a cross brace as well as our rack and pinion style steering which will go into the ends of these kingpins, that's what they're called. And uh, I don't know if you can actually make this steer. We'll take a look as we uh, check out our parts. 
I think so, because if I look at panel 13 up above, it says do not glue for the kingpins. So it must have posable steering, so that is always cool. Now get down to panel 16 here, and we attach our firewall into the engine bay, and then we add in our detail items like our battery, and then these look like overflow tanks and whatnot, which will all go in there. There's also a filler tube, it looks like a filler tube anyway, that glues into here. At the bottom of the page we have panel 18, which shows our engine being glued in place. Oh, okay, this little box thing up front is part of the uh, air filter for our plenum right here. So you glue the engine down, and then you put your air filter onto the little pin on the back end, and this whole box goes onto the bottom of this box. Boy, someone really clever could actually put a filter in here if you wanted. <laughs> At any rate, here we have our three or four piece radiator actually. So the front two fans and then the holder for the fans. And then in panel 20, we see this gluing on in place. And we have our upper radiator hose, which glues onto this little peg on the engine and a hole in the radiator. Panel 21 shows our rear axle and the differential here. So we've got a differential housing that glues on the end and our drive shaft is glued, or actually molded into place. And then panel 22, we see the drive shaft being hooked into the back of the transmission here and then gluing down onto these parts of our chassis. Here in panel 23, we see our exhaust pipes being glued in place. Now this is a heat shield which glues into here and that would go down first, of course. And also going down first is the upper strut arms for our differential. And again, we see the little uh, peg clip for our wheels to clip on. So make sure that there's no seam line so that your wheels will go nice and around. Here we have our rear muffler package and there are some extensions on the end. So overall, this is going to look great once you get it all together. In panel 24, we're continuing on with our chassis, and boy, there's a lot of parts on this kit. So I do believe these are all the plastic shields and whatnot that would cover the front end from stones flipping up underneath and chipping things or whatever. Now here we've got more extensions to the floorboards, which I'm not sure. We'll have to, I would have to build this kit to make sure, but I do believe these might go over the mufflers or... They might go near the mufflers. It almost looks like this is a cutout for the muffler edge here. And then in the back we have another one of these plastic panels. And it looks like there's some bracing to this as well. So again, a lot going on. Panel 25 shows the body upside down and all our glass is now being glued inside there. So make sure to paint the body before you actually put the glass inside. And then here we have an overhead console with the rear view mirror and that glues right between those two sun visors that are molded up inside there. Here in panel 26, I do believe this is the front end going together, but you're seeing everything being glued in from the back. So here we have the headlight, which I do believe is plated. And then we've got our clear cover, which goes over top of the headlight. And then I, this would be the grill being glued in place. Here we have parking lights and turn signal lights going down below. Again, the glass covers, and then we've got our grill going in from behind. Now down below in panel 27, we have the rear end being glued in place. So here we have our plated reflectors for the tail lamp, and then the transparent red panel, and there's a license plate which glues into here. Panel 28 is quite tall, but what it's showing is our completed body and the interior bucket being put into place, and then the interior bucket has tubes underneath which go into these little pegs. And there are some locator pegs going into holes up here and in the back. So all this sandwiches together and then your car will be placed together and uh, ready to get more details on it. Now here we have step 29A which is our top roof mounted lights. And here you're going to make this uh, two times so there's a bracket for either side the bottom of the light, and then the clear cover on top. Now here's our rear bumper being glued onto the back of the body. There are some little hooks in here which would attach to other locations, just like the real car. Now 29B, we have more of that. Oh, this is the optional 
uh, roof mounted light so you can see that basically nope they are they are different you can actually have two separate lights here so there is a different bracket number 215 and 216 whereas in 29a it was 213 and 14 a, a different bottom p201 versus p200 and then the top is c9 for that one and c10 so you do actually have two different police lights so you could use one on a different car if you want now here we have the windshield wipers going in place so again highly detailed and here's your option 29a or 29b for your overhead light you have lower rocker panels being glued in place as well and then the front end which doesn't look like there's any little hooks but there might be enough meat down here to glue this thing on looks like there's a bunch of holes in here as well so maybe those could be used and here it says to paint the black border around here so again really cool stuff now here we have some steps that are kind of just arranged more of an artistic thing so make sure you follow the numbers so here we have 32 and it looks like this is some kind of light being glued together not 100 percent sure and then down here we have optional wheels and it shows the tire being sandwiched onto the wheels so you've got either the stock style wheel with the holes in it or you can also have these sort of mag looking wheels now here we have step 34 so it goes 32 33 34 and what it shows is our side view mirrors with a uh, the mirror itself in the housing and then we have this little antenna whip thing here which glues on we also have disc brakes front and rear another mirror going in place now here pay special note to how the wheels are going together there's this little tube that goes inside the wheel and then there's a hubcap on here it says glue wheel retainer to wheel then snap onto axle as a unit and then we also have the push bar here and I do believe this is a light or maybe even photo radar some kind of box in there and that would glue on now where this thing goes you're supposed to make two of them but what is it <laughs> it looks like spotlights Oh, right here yes 32 spotlights both sides of the windshield post so again a lot of cool police details in this kit and our final panel and our instruction sheet shows all the decal locations for our police car and there are quite a lot of things going on here but overall you get the three views front rear and side so that can't be too bad now can it now with the instructions out of the way we can begin to look at our plastic model kit and the first thing I notice is there's a seam line that's going like this up into here and then out somewhere along this line. Actually, I think it goes up along this line here. Yep. So that'll have to be removed, sanded smooth. But overall, this body is really smooth and slick looking. If you can see it there, not much going on. But there are the little hooks for the bumper to lock in. Up front there's a lot of little holes so I assume that the front bumper has a lot of pegs off the back nice paneling in here little hole back here <laughs> gas tank or actually uh, the door for your gas filler up underneath again like I was saying before we've got the Sun visors there are some mold marks and of course the round two stamp underneath there so all of that will have to be removed or painted over maybe a little primer under there there are quite a lot of mold marks for this but overall they're all underneath so it should make for a clean outer exterior but always make sure that you uh, smooth out those mold marks so that everything will fit together nicely our first parts tree includes all the engine components or at least a lot of them anyway actually it's sort of a mixed bag here so we have the pedals for the dashboard the steering wheel one of those front plastic panels we have both sides of our engine block with what looks like a six-speed automatic transmission or it could be more like i say i'm a little out of date with the new cars <laughs> unfamiliar there's the uh, plenum right there we have our mirror housings more of those plastic panels there's our steering column I think this is the back of our differential. There's the two fans, the cross brace for the back of transmission, our radiator, and the heat shield for the exhaust, I believe anyway. But take a look at the detail on here. 
really nice and crisp. Excellent work. Even got the uh, accordion style for the hose there. Oh, this is the top of the uh, intake. On the back, lots of long pegs in here to go into holes. Hopefully the registration on this is a lot better so that you're not get, gluing the engine together and it's instead of being like that, it's like this or like this or whatever, like some of the other older AMT kits. But like my uncle always said, cut these pins off and just glue it around the outside. But we can always test that when I go to actually build this model. Mold marks, there are some on the back. You're going to have to check to see if you can see those or not. But always just make sure they're at least flat so they don't interfere when you're gluing parts together. But overall, this looks really good. Now there is one thing I notice with the AMT kits. There seems to be three versions of skill level two. This kit is supposed to be a skill level two. And I would say this is at the top end of skill level two before you're going into skill level three. Or even this is a skill level three kit and they're just using a two on there. At any rate, we have our windshield wipers here and here, inner door panels, which look fantastic. There is our king pins, and then we've got the plastic component that goes up underneath at the front. And then I do believe, I'm not sure what this is, what these are, <laughs> I can't remember, but they're there. Okay, so let's take a look at that door panel. And again, really nice detail, clean and crisp on there. Excellent for a fresh new kit, look at that front splash pan I believe it's called hey guys I'm filming this at 10 at night so <laughs> sort of the way it goes but yeah overall looks really good and really crisp and clean next up we have our interior pan this is really interesting it's all wide open right in here the uh, rear seat covers that so you won't see it but still unique how they did that now here we have these little pins again there's some of the interior components, the intake manifold, the overhead console, the bottom of the uh, plenum box. Here's our cylinder heads. I Okay, this has got to be a cylinder head. These are valve covers, sorry. And then here we've got a firewall and one of those pieces that goes toward the back where the mufflers are. So bringing this up to the camera again, you can see the wonderful detail in here smooth in here so there's no carpet detail so if you want to flock that that would be an excellent surface then uh, your firewall uh, this must be the heater cover look at the nice detail on those almost looks like the valves are kind of coming right almost out of the uh, valve covers underneath again lots of mold marks a little bit of uh, mold release agent in here so soapy warm water will clean that out but overall again really nice it's kind of cool to get a new kit every once in a while and see how the uh, tooling has evolved over time here we get the parts tree that includes the chassis pan as well as our wheel retainers and the front portion of our exhaust pipes look at how it kinks in here almost like an x we also have our back of our uh, radiator where the fans go and now here there are some mold marks right there and there and you can see that they do sit up just a little bit so getting your file in here and making that flat is always nice mold marks up here on the wheel arches quite a bit of a seam line running around here but nothing you couldn't fix with your hobby knife taking a look underneath you can see all the wonderful detail look at how many holes are swiss cheese mold here <laughs> but yeah that's for locating all those little panels and cover pieces and everything. Oops, looks like you would have your spare tire in here. Or maybe that's part of the gas tank. That's pretty cool where the fans are. Yeah, again, overall really and nicely done and should be cool. Our next parts tree includes that interior component. It's even got these little bars for a sliding window, which is interesting. Uh, now... These are parts of the mounting brackets for the lights. Have this little piece here as well. Looks like our front grills. We also have the uh, center console right there. And our photo radar box. All these kinds of different things. There's those spotlights. 
the little handle here for our gear shift lever and that looks really tight in there so hopefully you won't snap it when you're trying to get it off the parts tree just be very careful AMT plastic is a little bit softer I find than some of the monogram plastic or Ravel so uh, should give a little flex in there look at that neat grill <laughs> yeah lots of cool stuff lots of long pins mold marks on this side so make sure you sand them down because I do think you'll be able to see them once this is standing up there's our push bars as well again really nicely done nicely detailed and should look good on the completed model on this parts tree we have our dashboard we also have the top of our hemi engine and then our rack and pinion steering as well as this anti-sway bar then there's our rear differential almost looks like torque tube drive going back to the 40s and 50s again doesn't it in the 30s even then here's our armrests we have that serpentine belt and we have our rear cross member or rear axle you know what i'm saying <laughs> you know what i mean okay i don't really see that there's any detail here that you would have to scrape off like it mentioned in the instruction sheet so basically your decal would go straight on here which is always nice unless they're talking about for the radio or something i don't know i couldn't see it too hard to paint that radio f now there's our uh, elongated dashboard ever try cleaning your windshield on these <laughs> anyway there's our hemi covers there again really cool that serpentine belt is really nice on the back mold marks i should just uh, write a disclaimer on my videos warning on the back of every parts tree and every part is a mold mark <laughs> our next parts tree has those upper shock towers as well as our oil pan and transmission pan the starter motor oil filter this little filler tube and then uh, upper radiator hose a whole bunch of little bits and pieces there's the front timing chain cover mcpherson struts and the lower a arms for the front there's another one of those kick panel things again looks really good detail is quite crisp springs look pretty neat on those mcpherson struts lots of cool stuff so there's more white parts trees coming up because this thing is loaded here i'm showing two parts trees just because they are nice and small what we have is the back seat as well as the front seats now we don't have the front seat backs here's the back of the car and the front of the car now let's just move this aside the seats are very basic on this there's not much detail to them but if you are going to flock them or maybe not flock them but add a bit of a leather texture or something they will look quite nice on the back mold marks <laughs> there are some little spots on here so indentations on the sides of the seats for the seat back and a little bar in the center so that it won't collapse if you put a little bit too much pressure on it while you're gluing them together and then we also have these blades down below and those would go into little slots onto the floor of our interior so then here we've got our front bumper again very smooth and streamlined looks like side marker lamps right in there i don't know if you can see that it's got the uh, cutouts for the dual exhaust again on the real car this would all be a plastic impact bumper cover mold marks in here warning will robertson <laughs> lots of little pegs for uh, gluing into holes and whatnot but overall, these two components, parts trees, have a lot of neat, cool stuff on them. But again, the detail is a little soft. On this parts tree, we have another grill right here, as well as another grill right there. And then we have our seat backs and these little components. Lots of little components. This looks like a secondary um, transmission tunnel or a center console, I should say. It might be because... I do believe there are some parts on here from the regular 2021 Dodge that are not part of the police package. But right here we have our disc brakes, both front and rear. Again, really well done. Lots of neat detail. 
I think this is supposed to be smooth because it's all aerodynamic and whatnot. Mold marks on the back of the disc, so again, sand those. But yeah, really cool stuff. Nice to see new kits. Here we have the side rocker panels, as well as our rear mufflers. And then there's our hood. What this piece is, I'm not sure. That's... Well, that must be another cover for something underneath. Oh, the one at the back. Yes, that's right. So the rocker panels are long and smooth, which is quite interesting. There are three pegs in here, so they will attach to the body and be straight. Nothing under the hood. No uh, little mats or anything. That's interesting. wonder if that's what it's like on the real Dodge. Could be, because maybe the sheet metal is quite thin on these, you know, so that they'll be fast and lightweight. Here we have our clear components, and I'm going to leave the rear window and the windshield in the bag because it looks like some of this black paint is sort of flaking up in here, so I just want to keep my area clean. Now what we have here are the light bars, as well as the window for that pasture compartment, and a bunch of little turn or side marker lights, or actually I think these are just flashing light things. Then we have our windows for the sides, as well as the headlight covers and these tiny little, little clear components. Then we have our rear tail lamp right here in red. So let's just bring this up to the camera. So again, there's our clear glass. These little tiny things, be very careful because as soon as you cut them off, they're going to go airborne. And then you also have to get rid of the little attachment point. So you got to have really good fingers to get that all cleaned up. Overall, though, it looks pretty cool. Here we have our overhead light, two different light bar covers. That one's neat. Could also use that as a front grill on a 50s car or something. Custom. Really neat. Okay, and then we've got our red glass in the back. Nice, simple, looks pretty neat. And finally we've got those clear components with the black paint on them. There's our little cutout for the reverse light. <laughs> Again, really cool stuff, and once you get it all together, should look great. Here we have our chrome, and like I was saying before, there's not really much chrome on these cars. So what chrome there is, is used as a reflective surface or as a mirror. So here we have our interior mirror. We have the two components for our side mirrors. We also have the bottoms of our light bars. Then we have our reflectors for the rear glass, or sorry, the front headlights, and then the one for the rear. And here we have our exhaust outlets, or little extension pipes, I should say, and then what appears to be our hubcaps. So that is basically it for chrome on this kit, but what we do have looks quite nice. Some mold marks, but luckily they're underneath and not on the top, which I've seen happen. Now when you clip this off, there's going to be some visible plastic on the edges where the pins are. So make sure you have something like a mold tool chrome pen just to cover those areas over so that no one sees glaring white plastic or whatever the color is for this poking through the sides of your mirror. Here we have our wheels and tires, and I intentionally left this parts tree out until now, just so you could see what was going on. So here we have the factory steel rims with the holes in it for lightness, and here we have some actual factory mag wheels, again with holes in them for lightness. Now the tires are nondescript, so there's no Goodyear or Firestone or anything like that on the sidewalls, but they do look pretty neat anyway. There is our tread pattern on there and you have to cut the spider out. Now, where the spider is, unfortunately, you can sort of see what looks like a mold mark in the four corners. Now, I would uh, use this side of the tire on the outside and this inside into the wheel arches so that you don't really see it. But overall, this looks quite nice and should provide some good rolling stock for your model. Now, normally I do a big reveal and say, here's the moment you've all been waiting for, the decal sheet. But it was already on the side of the box, so anyway, here is the decal sheet. Now we've got the California Highway Patrol decals for the doors. So this is a chips car, modern chips car. There's the Highway Patrol down here, safety, service, and security, both in black and white. 
Now here you have your police American flag with the blue stripe in there. We also have the California license plate. Okay, so that's going to make sense there. Dodge lettering. Doesn't look uh, like lettering going up and down, but it is. Charger and RT, very tiny decals. 023456 for your numbers. There is the back for the tail lamps. Again, lots of little nice details in here. Hemi down there. You've got your uh, marker lights on the side, and then your instrument panel here. Now, sadly, this could have been printed a bit brighter so you can see the details. It basically looks like black strips, sort of like uh, the mask you would wear at night <laughs> to block out any light. <laughs> it kind of reminds me of that. Again, there's a lot of cool decals. I'm not totally sure what they all are, but uh, we can always check the instruction sheets again. But what's cool down here is you actually have three images for the crime computer. Now, I'm not sure what's going on in here, but there's a wanted poster, and it looks like maybe a fingerprint chart or something. Or maybe like a, a heat sensor kind of thing. I'm not too sure. Kind of too hard for me to understand what it is to see it, you know. But it does look cool and would look good sitting in, you know, as you see it through your windshield. Look at that license plate. They're all just a series of numbers on there. That's interesting. Never quite seen that. Usually there's uh, letters or something. So that must be a new thing the police are using. Now, wait a second. Would you suppose that this would be for the CB radio? 232-7647? Like the call, the call numbers of the uh, CB radio? It says CA exempt. I don't know. Somebody, uh, if you know, let me know in the comment section down below. Well, I hope you enjoyed that look at our 2021 Dodge Charger police car. Man, it sure is a cool kit, and I really like showing off the new stuff, as well as all our classic kits. So, if you enjoy this channel and want to see more, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And make sure that you check out our online store, www.monster-hobbies.ca, for all your model car kit needs. So until next time, everyone, always remember to be safe out there, and we'll see you in the next video.